Hello, it's Belinda here. Welcome Floss Jubers. It's fun to be back on here. Um, I just really appreciated everyone's comments from the last video I did. So thank you everyone for uh, being so friendly and telling me your own stories too. Um, somebody even said how she enjoys magpies and she has little fledglings that hang around in her property so that's really really nice a few minutes ago I looked out the window that I'm looking out now and I did see uh, one or two little magpies wandering around so hopefully they'll come back and they'll make a little bit of sound I open the windows just in case it's Sunday here and I'm feeling quite rested last week was a really really busy week at work um, I recovered yesterday having a nice easy day and I've still got lots of um, housework to do, so I better make this video a little bit short. I put together a few bits and pieces, a mixture of things that I have finished in the past, as well as something that I'm working on at the moment. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about, though, are the scroll bars and the decorative knobs that I showed you on the last video. These are made by a friend of mine called Tracy. And so I'm going to get um, a few more samples out to show you. If anyone's interested in ordering any or discussing with Tracy uh, um, the types of products that she makes, you can contact Primrose Scrollworks at yahoo.com and that's spelled P R. I M R O S E S C R O L L W O R K S at yahoo.com. Here was one of the um, scroll bars and sets that I showed last time. And these are the ones, if you remember, with the little cats on the knobs. So Tracy hand paints everything that you see, both these bars and the knobs and these are the um, cat knobs they're all four are different so I thought I'd show you a couple more pieces Tracy paints you name it she'll paint anything these are this is a little floss keep and it has lots of holes for different floss colors that you'll be using on any given project sometimes I Actually, you can see if you look closely, I've placed written the little symbols on the um, close to the holes so I can keep track of which thread it is that I'm using on a particular project. Then I just erase the little pencil mark. Tracy also makes scissor fobs. Here's a lovely one that she just um, sent to me. And it says, um, it's a little teddy bear. I talked about teddy bears. Isn't that gorgeous? That little teddy bear is stitching as well. They're beautiful. Here's another one. A sunflower. Just lovely. Pumpkin. Isn't that adorable? Pumpkin with... It's got a bee, a bee on it and a spider and three little daisies. She's so talented. I just adore her work. Here's a sheep. Now that matches the scroll bars and knobs that I showed in my last video. So again, you're welcome to um, contact me for more information or reach out to Tracy directly at Primrose Scroll Works at yahoo.com. While I've got this up, I thought I'd show you this little project. This is a start I've made on a Thanksgiving design. This is a downloadable chart. It's a free chart. It's on DMC's website. It's called Thanksgiving Sampler. Really lovely. It does call for DMC threads as well as Ida cloth, but I don't stitch on Ida. Um, so I have put um, decided to work on some linen. I can't remember what 
linen it is. However, I can tell you the silk that I've decided to use instead of DMC thread. It's Tudor silk, Autumn Splendor. It's a beautiful variegated silk. It's so beautiful. And if you have ever worked with silk, you'll you'll love it. It's it's so lustrous. Has a beautiful sheen as well as being uh, just very light and has a um, an air about it that is just so beautiful to use. So this is an extra fine floss, hand dyed by Gloriana Threads. And again, this is Autumn Arbor number 113, Tudor Silk. So it is the perfect colours for autumn. Reds and greens. I need to get back onto that because... Thanksgiving is not far away and I would really like to have that project completed by Thanksgiving. See. Here's an example of something tiny that I make. I love to make dainty little items that really aren't useful for anything. They're really purely decorative. This is a little Mill Hill kit. So Mill Hill have put out lots of these. There's a series of these little kits that contain beads and uh, a little piece of linen and as well as a little lead weight. I think it's a lead weight. So it gives the little cushion some substance. I'm having that weight in it. I loved working the beaded fringe because I love working with beads and really this was a pleasure to make. I um, will show you another time another project that I made using a similar fringe. Uh, just I used that beaded fringe idea for a larger cushion. So there are a variety of these. They have roses, daisies, um, I can't think of the other ones. This is Starlight Lily, this particular one from memory. I'll show you a, oh goodness, I forgot to go and get the pattern. Oh goodness, I'll have to show this again sometime. This is something I did actually finally frame. I framed it myself, um, I ordered the frame online somewhere and managed to frame it somehow. This is stitched, it's very fine, it's stitched um, over one thread I believe, using I think it's all DMC threads and I can't remember the name of the designer but I must show this again sometime. I put my initials up there but really I just love very very fine cross stitch. I love to use high thread counts such as 40 count and 36. I um, prefer to use one th strand of thread as well. So I try to steer away from projects where I have to use two strands of thread. I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I like the stitches to look really tidy and so I find that if I use one th strand, that my stitches lie much more neatly. So this is really sweet. Lovely wee church on a hill. Oh, goodness, I wish I could remember the name of that designer. I didn't stitch it on the called for linen. I think I, I made this um, using something that I had in my stash. But I'll bring that out again another time. Um, see, all these things that I've finished and I've put the charts away, I think I'll not need to turn to them, turn back to them. So it's a bit of a hunt sometimes just to get these um, projects back up to show you on floss tube, but I, I must do better. So here's another project that I, I really enjoyed making. This, I do have the chart for you to show you. Um, so... First of all, I'll just rotate it. This is one of Brenda Gervais' designs. I absolutely adore Brenda Gervais' designs. She's um, Her company is Country Stitches, or she goes by 
with thy needle and thread. This is her berries and blooms design. And so that's the center project. Stitched, I believe, using Newcastle linen, I think. I'm not absolutely sure. Let's see. Yes, 40 count Newcastle linen using Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Art threads. It's very fine, so that is stitched uh, one thread over two on 40 count. And I put some fun little hat pins and so forth in there. Um, it's really, really fun. I love that. I used a green fabric on the back. Um, that's a Civil War reproduction fabric, I believe. I love collecting quilt fabric for the backs of my pincushions. I have fun um, choosing the backing pieces. I have stitched this item here. But I need to finish it off. It's not finished. In addition to Brenda Gervais, my other favourite designer is um, Blackbird Designs. So I've stitched loads of their designs. Um, I'll bring some of those out in future videos. I was, I'm still working on that Lizzie Kate that I showed last week. So I have the beads on there and um, the majority of it stitched. I've just got a line and a little bit to finish in the flag. I ran out of thread. I didn't have enough of that thread colour in my stash so I've got to hunt for something more. Something, a whip that I have started a while back. And I returned to do some more on this yesterday. This is a, um, I guess you pronounce it, Bursilla design. And it's the Esther Cop sampler from 1765. If you go onto the Smithsonian's website, you can see the original sampler on there. So this is a true sampler stitched by um, Esther Cop in 1765. This is a kit that you can purchase and it does come with all of the DMC thread as well as the Ada cloth. I'm not stitching mine on Ada because I like using um, over dyed linens. This is what I have so far completed. It's a little hard to see, it's very dainty and I know there's quite a bit of light in here. Um, so the center, the, all the letters of the alphabet are stitched in specialty stitches. There are eyelet stitches and I think it's um, rice stitch. I can't remember now. So some specialty stitches, then everything else is cross stitch really love these colors. It's a totally different color palette that I'm used to. So lots of aqua um, and some yellows. I hardly ever stitch with yellow and blue. So very pretty. I love this. I hope to show some more of that completed um, in future videos. So I am going to return to that. I think I'm going to stick with that project for a while. And then I um, do some knitting now and again. This is a um, pattern you can find on Ravelry. I think it's called the Fisher hat. It's a man's hat. Simple to knit. You knit it in the round on circular needles. Really easy. No seams. That's kind of nice. And a simple cable design around the outside. It is meant for men, but I'll put it on. It's a look funny. Whoops. I'll mess up my hair. 
so it stretches it's a little bit big my husband's been wearing it but look it keeps you warm and here in New Zealand in the winter time it's good to keep your noggin warm so yeah that doesn't look too bad on me but I'm not sure I'd go to work wearing it no give that a miss so anyway um I just knitted him that I've knitted that pattern before it's really simple it always turns out well using a I think it's like a uh, some, a yarn that's kind of between 8 ply and 12 ply so a little heavier than a double knit really cute I think that's basically all of the stitching I was going to show this week um, I need to get more organized since we moved into this cottage I haven't got all of my sewing stash figured out. It's kind of all spread out all over this tiny cottage. I've been hunting for spaces to store things. So actually every room in this house contains bits and pieces from my stash. It's not ideal. I, I would love to have everything in one space. Can't do that in this wee cottage that we built. We're thinking about making a large walk-in cupboard space in the wool shed. So the wool shed where I was, um, I used to spend a lot of time when I was a child, is just a stone's throw. It's only metres away from the cottage. Um, so that would be quite convenient. And um, I'd be able to have everything in one space again. It gets cold out there though in the winter time. So we're going to have to make a really well built cupboard that's insulated. So that nothing gets mildewy or starts to... Um, you know just get a little bit nasty or have any odor to it in a cold being stored in a cold space I finished the book that I showed you last week the good daughter it had a really shockingly violent scene toward the end that actually rattled my nerves a little bit so I'm not as hardened as I thought I was uh, but a fabulous book if you are the sort of person who can enjoy a good thriller I don't watch thrillers on TV, so no, I, I definitely don't watch movies that are thrillers, but I didn't, I really enjoyed that book. I'm about to start one of Margaret Atwood's many novels. This is Alias Grace, and I've really only delved into the first cup, uh, like first chapter as well as some awesome little bits that are in the beginning. This is a story about a woman from Canada, I believe, Grace Marks, who was imprisoned for murder. She, I think she spent 30 years in prison in, during the 1800s and was later pardoned. She disappeared, I think, somewhere. She had come over to the United States. So she was perhaps wrongfully accused of murder. I like the idea of reading this book because I think that being a um, such a great writer and poet, um, Margaret Atwood's writing is going to be quite poetic and lyrical at times, which I adore because I'm a poetry fanatic. I love poetry. I, I studied poetry, um, Irish poetry, during my research degree. And that's what I specialised in. So anytime I can read a novel that is lyrical, I, I go for it. If you have any recommendations, please um, make comments because I would love to, to discover a new author or a new book. So quite interesting. Um, I thought I'd read a little bit from it. Someone called Susanna Moody was also a, a, a real live person and she wrote a, a few books. This is a snippet from one of her publications, Life in the Clearings, from 1853. At the time of my visit, there were only 40 women in the penitentiary. This speaks much for the superior moral training of the feebler sex. My chief object in visiting their department was to look at the celebrated murderess, Grace Marks, of whom I had heard a great deal not only from the public papers, but from the gentlemen who defended her upon her trial, 
and whose able pleading saved her from the gallows on which her wretched accomplice closed his guilty career. Quite intriguing. And I'll read the first chapter. It's only t not even two pages long. It'll give you an idea of perhaps the suspense that could be in store. It starts off rather innocently and then all of a sudden something dark happens. Out of the gravel there are peonies growing. They come up through the loose grey pebbles, their buds testing the air like snail's eyes, then swelling and opening, huge dark red flowers all shining and glossy like satin. Then they burst and fall to the ground. In the one instant before they come apart, they are like the peonies in the front garden at Mr Kinnear's that first day, only those were white. Nancy was cutting them. She wore a pale dress with pink rosebuds and a triple flounced skirt and a straw bonnet that hid her face. She carried a flat basket to put the flowers in. She bent from the hips like a lady, holding her waist straight. When she heard us and turned to look, she put her hand up to her throat as if startled. I tuck my head down while I walk, keeping step with the rest, eyes lowered silently two by two around the yard, inside the square made by the high stone walls. My hands are clasped in front of me, they're chapped, the knuckles reddened. I can't remember a time when they were not like that. The toes of my shoes go in and out under the hem of my skirt, blue and white, blue and white, crunching on the pathway. These shoes fit me better than any I've ever had before. It's 1851. I'll be 24 years old next birthday. I've been shut up in here since the age of 16. I am a model prisoner and give no trouble. That's what the government's wife says. I have overheard her saying it. I'm skilled at overhe overhearing. If I'm good enough and quiet enough, perhaps after all they will let me go. But it's not easy being quiet and good. It's like hanging on to the edge of a branch when you've already fallen over. You don't seem to be moving, just dangling there, and yet it is taking all your strength. I watch the peonies out of the corners of my eyes. I know they shouldn't be here. It's April, and peonies don't bloom in April. There are three more now, right in front of me, growing out of the path itself. Furtively, I reach out my hand to touch one. It has a dry feel, and I realise it's made of cloth. Then up ahead, I see Nancy on her knees, with her hair fallen over and the blood running down into her eyes. Around her neck is a white cotton kerchief, printed with blue flowers. Love in a mist. It's mine. She's lifting up her face. She's holding out her hands to me for mercy. In her ears are the little gold earrings I used to envy, but I no longer begrudge them. Nancy, Nancy can keep them, because this time it will all be different. This time I will run to help. I will lift her up and wipe away the blood with my skirt. I will tear a bandage from my petticoat, and none of it will have happened. Mr Kinnear will come home in the afternoon. He will ride up the driveway, and McDermott will take the horse. And Mr. Kinnear will go into the parlour and I will make him some coffee. And Nancy will take it into him on a tray the way she likes to do. And he will say, what good coffee? And at night the fireflies will come out in the orchard and there will be music by lamplight. Jamie Walsh, the boy with the flute. I am almost up to Nancy to where she's kneeling, but I do not break step. I do not run. I keep on walking two by two, and then Nancy smiles, only the mouth. Her eyes are hidden by the blood and hair, and then she scatters into patches of colour, a drift of red cloth petals across the stones. I put my hands over my eyes because it's dark suddenly, and a man is standing there with a candle blocking the stairs that go up, and the cellar walls are all around me and I know I will never get out. This is what I told Dr. Jordan when we came to that part of the story. So that is part one. It was called Jagged Edge.
Um, interestingly, in this edition of Alias Grace, every part has a quilt block. So I wonder if that is the name of a quilt block. Uh, jagged edge, possibly. But every part does contain one. There's Rocky Road. They're definitely quilt blocks. Um, yes, Puss in the Corner. Now I know for a fact that that is a, um, a quilt block. So I think that's pretty cool. There's lots of poetry in here as well. There are true poems. So I'm really going to love it. Some letters. Who knows? Hopefully it'll be good. I'll let you know next time I make a video. Well, I'm going to get going now and do some housework. I've got to vacuum and dust and clean. And then this afternoon I want to go out in the garden. I did plant um, some geraniums recently. They need to be watered. I must show you next time some geranium cuttings. I actually, I actually broke off some geranium stems by accident when I was um, preening them, pruning. So I put them in a glass of water on the kitchen windowsill, and they've produced roots. One of the cuttings actually um, has produced a long stem, and it has a flower on the end of it, a little bud that hasn't opened yet. But this was fun, so I'm going to go and plant those out in pots. Um, geraniums are so easy to grow cuttings from, so I love to watch things grow. So I must show you um, that little cutting sometime. Alright, well I'm going to end here. I hope this wasn't too long. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep stitching, and um, your comments are welcome. Don't forget magpies and me, and have a lovely week. See you soon. Bye.